Good evening. I appreciate you guys coming in on a Sunday. I'm very excited uh, and honored to represent our conference in the Russell Athletic Bowl down in Orlando. Uh, a great game from talking to some coaches who, had, who have been down there before and uh, certainly a great destination, you know, not just for our football team, but for our entire university and fan base. Orlando is a great city and a place that, that people go for a lot of reasons in December and I, and I think this will be one, this will give our fans one more reason to go down there. You know, to play a traditional power like Virginia Tech, I think is going to be a, a great experience for, for our team and a great challenge for us. You know, Coach Beamer is the active wins leader amongst Division I football coaches, and is certainly his track record speaks for itself. They've got a, a fine football team. Uh, we're in the beginning, I'm in the beginning stages of getting to know their team a little bit better, but I know they've got a very talented quarterback and Logan Thomas, who, uh, who leads their, their team both in passing and in rushing. And they've got a very fine defense, you know, ranked 24th in the country. And um, do an excellent job against the run and, and certainly do an extra excellent job in scoring defense as well. As you would expect from a Frank Beamer team, their special teams are, are, are excellent. And their kickoff returner and their punt returner, both really fine football players. Uh, their punt returner we're very familiar with, somebody that we, uh, we had a lot of interaction with during the recruiting process. And uh, we, are, we are very excited to, to get going here with the second season. You know, the bowl season it gives us an opportunity to, I think, do a couple of different things. You know, on a football team where we were able to redshirt 17 freshmen, it gives us another 14 practices to develop that group of players and get them ready to be hopefully contributors next season. And it also gives our seniors an opportunity to do something that only two teams in the history of Rutgers football have done, which is, which is get to the double-digit wins mark. And I think that when you, when you get to the 10-win mark, it, it separates your team and your year, and it puts you in a, in a little bit of a different class. And certainly, you know, great programs a lot of times are defined by their 10-win seasons. And so I think this is a, an excellent opportunity for us to send our seniors out the right way, not just as the, the first team in history to win a share of the Big East title, but also one of only three 10-win, 10-plus win teams in, in the history of our program. So with that, I would open it for questions. Uh, with Virginia Tech, what do you know the history between Rutgers and Virginia Tech? I know they're a former member of the Big East, but when I, when I got here in 2005, Virginia Tech was already in the ACC. So I, I know Virginia Tech's had an excellent football program for a long time. And other than that, I really don't know much about, about the rivalry between those two schools. Kyle, from looking at uh, Logan Thomas, or knowing what you know him so far, would he kind of compare to to somebody you've seen in the Big East, like a B.J. Daniels or a quarterback like that? His skill set might be similar. Again, I haven't watched enough film to, to make those kind of comparisons, but I know enough about his stature that he would be much different than B.J. He's a six foot six athlete. You know, B.J. is probably a six foot six one athlete. So uh, I think he's a different, a different guy than maybe anybody we've seen in a long time. But until we watch the film and really get into it, you know, we haven't even done the film exchange part of it just yet. So until we do, until we do that, it's tough to say. How's your team psyche, and do you have any doubt that they'll be able to regroup and win a ball game? I think, you know, following the game, we were certainly disappointed. There's no doubt as, as a football program, you know, we were disappointed at the outcome of the game. But when I, when I got a chance to see the players today, you know, they're excited about the opportunity that's ahead of us. And I think the, you know, we certainly have proven that over the years, or, or the last seven years specifically, that our track record in terms of getting ready for these bowl games is pretty good, whether coming off a win or coming off a loss at the end of the season. I think the bowl season is a new season, and we've always approached it like that. It's got a little bit of a different format to it than the regular season, and, and I think our teams have really done a good job of, of focusing on the opponent and trying to finish off the season the right way. I think it's some of the keys to bowl success since you were around so much of it. Is there any particular things you picked from Greg and want to enhance or tweak? I think, you know, going into this for the first time, for me, I can, I can only draw on the experiences that I had as an assistant coach doing it here at Rutgers. And for us, I think part of, part of the success here has come from, first of all, making it a new season. And, that, and that's what it is, it really. When you, when you play a game and then you don't play another game for about a month, it's, it's a completely different situation than you're ever in you know, during the regular season. I think part of it is certainly the training you do off the field because you're not going to practice every day. So you know, what goes on in the, weight, in the weight room and from a conditioning aspect, I think it's critical to make sure that you're, you are ready to play a football game in a month. You know, I think when you 
when you finish the season, your bodies are beat up. By the time you get to the bowl game, you would hope that you're in a little bit better physical condition, physical shape than you were maybe at the end of the season. So I think those are the things that jump out to me you know, right away. And then I think certainly as you get closer to the game, the focus shifts from being developmental to game planning. And I think you have to make that shift not only as a coaching staff, but the team has to make that shift. The priorities change as you get a little bit later in the bowl season. Kyle, do you know what you're looking at as far as practices yet when you're going to go and stuff? The way I have it mapped out right now, we're going to have 14 practices before the game, the first of, the first of which will be this upcoming Saturday. And do they, is it 15 year round? you know what the number of them is? There, there is, there really is no number that you're allowed. You know, I think people come up with that number because a lot of times coaches refer to bowl season as an extra spring, and I think people make the association of it being 15. It would be, you know, with the academic requirements of our team and our university, it would, I don't think it would be in our best interest to have more than 14. I think 14 will give us an opportunity to, to do both, to develop our younger players and then make sure that the game planning part of it, you know, we're ready to go. It's very much in line with what we've done in the past. When do you want to be there? We're going to get there the Sunday prior to the game. We'll travel. And when we travel that Sunday, because the game's on a Friday, essentially that'll put us through a normal That's game week for us. 23rd? I can tell you it is the 23rd, yeah. correct. We would no. travel on the 23rd, play on the 28th. And when would your first practice be? 24th. Is the full week off, is that more mental or physical that you want to give them that break? It's physical. and It's, it's, it's a week off from football practice, but it's not a week off from training. You know, we'll be doing stuff you know, from a strength standpoint, from a conditioning standpoint in the weight room. But this is also a critical time for our players academically. You know, we're, we're reaching the end, of the end of the semester, so there are papers that are coming due. There are final exams to prepare for. So it'll be a full week for our players, even without going on the football field until Saturday. How much of a kind of a, not necessarily a shock, but, but a new experience for the true freshmen or the redshirt kids who are going through finals and going through a bowl season you know, for the first time, how much of an adaptation thing is it for? It is. It's a, it's a tremendous change. You know, the, the, the players have gone through a longer season than they've ever gone through. And now they're about to go through another season. And they'll have this week off the field, but we're still going to train through it. And from an academic standpoint, it's a little bit different than anything they've experienced because they're going through college courses for the first time. So there definitely is a transitional phase into bowl season for those freshmen. And I think we're, we try to stay very in tune to that with the position coaches and the academic support, et cetera, to make sure we get them through it the right way. Is it any kind of challenge to balance fun and the business aspect of it? <clears throat> It never has been for me. I, I really believe if, you, if you're doing something that you enjoy, you should be able to work really hard at it but really enjoy while you do it. And, and that's, that's something I've always enjoyed about the different places that I've coached. Even when we get to these situations where we're, we're getting ready for a game and, and the outcome of the game has consequences. You know, for us, there's a, a tremendously positive consequence for these seniors of being able to go out with a 10-win season, something that separates them from a lot of football teams here, here at Rutgers. So, we're going to take that very seriously, but I think while you do that, you should be able to enjoy it and enjoy the experience. We've used the expression here in the past, when it's time to work, it's time to work. And then when that part of the day is over, then you get to enjoy some of the benefits of being a bowl eligible team and going to a great place like Orlando. Tom, from a health standpoint, one, I guess just how is Brandon Jones coming out of that game, and two, are there any guys that you lost early in this year you can see maybe being back for the bowl? To answer the second part, really the, the one guy would be Kyle Federico. You know, we have to see really with four weeks to, to, between the last game and the bowl game, we'll, we'll get a little bit of an idea of, of where he'll be. Brandon Jones, my information today, we were more optimistic today than we were at the end of the game. So, But it's going to be a very, without getting into the specifics of the injury, it's going to be a very tight timeline for him. So he's really going to be kind of on the bubble until we get to about game week and then we're going to have to make a decision. Kyle, how similar are these two teams, at least at first glance, in terms of their uh, defensive and special teams philosophies? Well, I, I've never met Coach Beamer, but I, I certainly know enough about him for being in this business to know, that he, how, to know how he values special teams and how his football teams embrace special teams. And I would like to think that we do that here as well at Rutgers. Uh, defensively, I know what they used to be because there were a lot of teams locally that ran the, the Virginia Tech 4-2-5 system. I don't know that that's what they still do because I haven't looked at them on film yet, but I know they got a great tradition of, of playing good defense, having some really fine defensive linemen while they were doing it. 
and then as we get into the film, we'll be able to have a little bit of an idea of you know, what the similarities may be. But I don't think structurally there's a, there's a, a lot of similarities. But again, I haven't studied them yet. Uh, have you gotten any initial feedback from Tim or Jason or anything about um, fans getting down there and, and what your expectations are for big fans or not? I have not discussed with either of them specifically what it would be, but I, but I know in, in we've been fortunate to go to some great cities, you know, with these bowl trips. Orlando certainly is a, as great a destination as there could be, you know, for a bowl game late December between the game itself and then Disney and, and the surrounding uh, surrounding opportunities you have in that city. I, I have to believe we're going to, we've had very good turnouts in the past for these games. I have no reason to believe we won't have the best turnout we've ever had for this one. I know it's the non-contact period, that part of the month, but playing in Florida, does that do anything recruiting-wise just for visibility? It certainly doesn't hurt. And it certainly is, a, is, is nice for the, the players on our team you know, that are from Florida. It gives, gives their families a chance, and maybe family members or former teammates or former coaches who haven't been able to, to get up here to see a game. It gives them an opportunity in their home state you know, to get out and, and, and see their guys you know, play locally. So I think certainly when, when you go to a bowl game in an area that you recruit, there's no negative to it. It can only be a positive.